Good morning, guys. It is almost 7.30. It's Tuesday, uh, the 7th of December. Somebody had told me that I should say the date because these videos get shared over the course of several days and weeks. And um, so it's helpful to have a date. And so it is uh, Tuesday, uh, December 7th. It is, like I said, close to 7.30 in the morning. Um, I just wrapped up a Fox business interview um, with Maria. Um, I'm up here in Washington, DC. I have got the window open, even though it is a little bit cold outside. I like cold weather and um, these, these buildings are very old. So I try to keep some airflow going um, also for my sanity, but wanted to have a cup of coffee with you guys before the day really got kind of crazy and underway. So um, if you got a cup of coffee, would love to share it with you. Um, and just got a couple things that I want to talk to you about of what's going on. Um, there's a lot that's been happening over the last um, couple weeks, lots of questions about what's going on. So we'll just dive right in. Um, I, I do want to recognize that today is the 80th anniversary uh, of Pearl Harbor. And um, in our district, which is North Central Florida, which is kind of Jacksonville, Gainesville, Ocala area. I know we have a lot of followers that aren't from our area, but it's kind of north of Orlando area. Um, within our district, we have um, quite a few World War II veterans. And um, one, we just lost Mr. Jack Edge. He was 97 years old. Um, and he passed away about a week and a half ago. And I had um, met him back in 2016 or 17, I can't remember. Great, great man, um, just heart of gold. And he was a Pearl Harbor survivor. Um, it was, he was 17 and had joined, um, had joined the military. And uh, it, it was just devastating to know that he passed away right before the 80th anniversary. So keep Mr. Mr. Jack's family in your prayers. Um, keep all of those um, that we lost that day in your prayers and their families. As y'all know, that was a turning point in, in our nation's history and really was the turning point in, in world history. And um, uh, as you guys know, I am the granddaughter of two World War II veterans, one who served in um, the South Pacific and the other who served in um, the European theater, he uh, was a POW, was held by the Nazis in Germany. And uh, so um, this, is, this is a big day for so many families and so many people. So take a moment to just recognize um, that today is the 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. Uh, what is going on this week in Washington? I don't even really know where to begin because the news that I'm getting, the updates that I'm getting um, internally, they make my stomach turn. Um, a lot of people are wondering, you know, we're hearing on the news that there's going to be a debt ceiling vote, there's going to be the National Defense Authorization Act vote. And let me just kind of break that down. So you're gonna hear on the news, National Defense Authorization Act. People refer to that as the NDAA. It's just easier to refer to it that way. Everybody calls it the NDAA. It is an annual um, bill that is considered a must pass bill. So it is typically supported bipartisanly, Republicans and Democrats, and it is what funds our military and um, it's an important bill. But there's all kinds of things within that bill that are um, controversial, that need to be worked out. The House, we passed the preliminary version um, several months ago and it has been sitting at the Senate. The Senate has been trying to take it up on a vote and they have many different provisions in the House version. So how it works is once it passes the House, it goes to the Senate and then it goes to what is called conference. And within that conference is where the differences in the two bills are worked out and then it goes back for a final vote. Now, what we're trying to do is get the Senate version put on their, scout, their, their, their calendar, their schedule, so that they can vote on it. Um, but there's a lot of games and trickery that's being played right now. So also happening this week is the debt limit, um, the debt ceiling will be reached according to uh, Janet Yellen. The debt ceiling 
um, is also a bit of a controversial vote. What we have seen in the um, Senate side now is talks about combining the vote to marry the debt ceiling with the NDAA. Now, Kevin McCarthy, who is the Republican leader on the House side, has said, no, we're not going to vote on that. We're not doing that. We're not putting our members in that position. That's not going to fly. So now they're trying to figure out how can they get a no enough votes in the Senate on the debt ceiling vote um, because what we're seeing is with the debt ceiling, they're saying that you default open to interpretation if the debt ceiling is reached and it's not increased. However, the debt ceiling is accounting for, f for funds and money that has already been authorized to be spent. Many people argue that, okay, this government, the Biden administration has engaged in runaway spending and without serious reforms to that spending, why would we continue to reauthorize an increase in the debt ceiling? So I think there's some serious, serious reforms that need to be made to spending before we okay, um, which is why I am against a debt ceiling increase. But marrying it and tying it to the National Defense Authorization Act is one, it's just political gimmicks and trickery, honestly, to make their life easier so they can ensure they have the votes, while simultaneously compromising national security by holding hostage the National Defense Authorization Act. So this is the, this is the game that gets played up here. That is what is on tap for this week, is this really big struggle, this big push and pull tug of war between the House and the Senate and the NDAA and the debt ceiling increase. And you're gonna see a lot of fear mongering happening in the media. People are gonna say, oh my gosh, if the United States defaults, it'll be the first time. Whoa, cool your jets. Thing that people need to realize is that media is literally paid and makes money off of eyeballs. And if they are screaming at the top of their lungs that the, the ceiling and the sky is falling, they're gonna get more eyeballs. So we need to just be cool, calm, and collected moving into this and be rational, use some common sense. Also, there needs to be a separation of the two bills. The National Defense Authorization Act, NDAA, needs to be separated from the debt ceiling vote. The two married, that's just trickery and games and no one should, no one should stand for that. Um, the other thing, there's some controversial things within the NDAA that you're going to see and you're going to hear about. Um, the, the thing that I would encourage you to do is, one, take a step back and really recognize that there's a long process with the NDAA to get it through both the House, the Senate, and then conference. And when it goes to conference, that's when a lot of the those items are kicked out, um, really worked out. And so there's no need to, to freak out is my point. Um, let me see. Um, Build Back Better. A lot of people have been asking me about Build Back Better and what is going on with that. So let me get a sip of coffee before I do dive into that. Okay. So Build Back Better. With everything that is happening right now in Washington, we are in session for this week. And dang it, I had... A copy of the session calendar and now I don't have it so we get a session calendar um, towards the end of every year that kind of plans out when we're gonna be up here in Washington when we have committee weeks etc and this is the last session week for the house so we're done after this supposedly now in years past um, we have been called in I have this is my first year so but I've I've, I've known about this for a while um, Congress has typically been called back. They, they play these gimmicky games, government shutdowns, debt ceilings, defaults, right up into the holidays. Again, just poor crisis management. Government should not be run this way and that's why we're here, we're trying to fix it. So um, you're not going to see, most likely, a vote on the Build Back Better bill until next year. Why is that significant? You guys, who have been following us, you have been making phone calls, you have been um, reaching out to your members of Congress, both on the House and the Senate side, and really putting the pressure on your representatives in Washington to not 
pass this bill. You were able to hold off Nancy Pelosi for about nine weeks. You forced her because of your outrage, your engagement, your calling of people. You basically forced her and her colleagues to rewrite the bill multiple times. I think it was about four times. The fact that that happened is incredibly significant because it served as a warning to the Senate how controversial this bill, not just for the price tag, but for the programs that it creates, um, really is. So the Senate is going to have a hell of a time trying to bring this up. As you guys know, Chris and Cinema and Joe Manchin in the Senate, they're two Democrats that have not come on board with the Biden Build Back Better. I call it Build Back Broke agenda. So they're right now really holding the line and your continued engagement in calling on your senators, that is very helpful. Let me tell you why that's significant because the Biden administration, Biden himself and Nancy Pelosi, along with Chuck Schumer, they put an, a deadline on themselves that they were gonna get this done by the end of the year. Look around, go to a gas station, fill up your gas tank, go to the grocery store, do anything in everyday middle America, and you know that everything is crazy expensive, everything is in short supply, um, there's no workers anywhere. You know, you can go to Lowe's, you can go to Home Depot, you can find the shortage of laborers. Um, I went to grab a bite to eat last night when I got into Washington, D.C. There were supposed to be about eight people working at this particular restaurant. They had three and they were stressed out to the max. So the Biden administration is in a really, really bad place. They have no idea how devastating the consequences will be if they force it through. What they do know is it's going to be mad because Americans across the board, Republican, Democrat, Independent, are angry. Very, very angry. The inflation is is now, I think, at a 45-year high, 40 or 45-year high. It's insane. So they put this artificial deadline of they're going to pass this by the end of the year. As it stands right now, keep in mind, the House is only in session until the end of this week. They may call us back, but it's unlikely because they have the NDAA and the debt ceiling to get through. Unlikely that they are going to be able to bring the Build Back Better agenda up again because they know how controversial it is. They know the fights that that's gonna, that it's gonna take. Do they wanna stay through Christmas and have that fight? No. So let's just, let's take a deep breath and realize that this is a huge win. The fact that we have continued to deny the Build Back Broke agenda and that gives us a chance to rally and really push hard at the beginning of the year to make sure that this bill never sees the light of day in the Senate. So um, that's a little bit of good news. The fact that they won't be able to bring it up. It's like I said, very unlikely. I will put this caveat in there. Everything up here is subject to change on a moment's notice. Nancy Pelosi runs the house um, and, and she changes stuff all the time. I could be here through the weekend. I could be called back next week. It changes at her discretion. That is why it is so important to have the majority because the majority determines the, the speed, the timing, when things come to the floor, when you're in session, when you get recalled, all that. So the majority rules on all things. And um, so that is what is going on. Something else to keep in mind is... Uh, this week, um, actually today, we've been getting a lot of notices from security about planned demonstration. Uh, there is going to be a ton of liberals that descend on the Capitol, um, and there's a bunch of planned demonstrations that are gonna be um, happening around the Capitol Hill complex as well as through the city. Um, I think that anytime someone um, expresses their First Amendment rights, that's great has to be peaceful. That is actually in the Constitution, um, peaceful assembly. And so uh, keep keep everybody in your prayers. Pray, pray that everything remains very calm and peaceful um, throughout the day. And um, I'm going to see if I can read any of the questions. I can't reach. The, the phone is kind of far away from the desk. So um, let me see if I can answer any of your questions that are coming up. <clears throat> Um, Lori, thanks for the information without degrading the other side. I try, I try to just give you the, the facts. Um, and quite frankly, I, 
this, this may sound um, very simplistic and I have 10 minutes. Oh gosh, I have 10 minutes until I have to go do the next interview. Great. <laughs> um, and so I have to actually go change. Um, but um, no, I, uh, I, I, think, I think that people should operate with, with some pretty simple basics. In my case, I don't say something unless, um, unless I know that if my mom were to hear it, she'd be proud. If I know that my mom would be disappointed in something that I did or said, um, I wouldn't do it. And I don't ever want to tear down anyone for really any reason. Um, I will absolutely attack policies. I'll attack ideas. I won't attack people. Um, and uh, that's particularly true when it comes to this Republican on Republican violence that we're seeing. Guys, if Republicans yelling at Republicans actually worked, we wouldn't be losing all the time. It's just a fact. It's time to try something a little bit different. Um, there is nothing gained by Republican on Republican violence at all. Um, in fact, it helps the left. The left takes those words, they take those sound bites, and they use it to fundraise to the tune of several million dollars. I am not about to help the liberal left raise money to destroy our country. So um, that's why I'm pretty particular and, and choosy when it comes to what I say about um, colleagues. And um, I just tend to steer away from it because I think there's, there's more productive, more effective ways um, to get our message across and get things done without you know, tearing people down in the process. So, um, let me see, can you have an autograph? Yes, uh, if you would like that, you can reach out to our office. 202-225-5744 um, is our office number. Also, you guys can call our office, our team. Our, um, our office opens at 8.30 in the morning and we um, shut down at 5.30. I'm usually here before and well after. And surprise, surprise, I actually do answer the phone. Um, which is always fun when people call and um, they don't believe that it's me answering the phone. That's always kind of fun. Um, but I do have to get going. I'm so sorry. I can't reach across um, to answer questions and move the screen up and down. Um, oh, Amy, Amy McGee, could you start putting a few items a day that are in the BBB on your page so we can find out what's in it? Yes. Um, Amy, I'm happy to do that. There is a litany of things that are within the Build Back Broke agenda that people need to know about and talk about. Um, so I will be happy, happy, happy to do it. Um, something else, um, last week we voted on a bill called the Immunization Infrastructure Modernization Act of uh, 2021. People are hearing about this. They're calling it a vaccine bank. Here's the bill. My team always does a workup, a memo, and you can see I wrote no because I read the bill. I read the bills. Um, and I, it happened last week. So calling members about it is and encouraging them to vote no against it isn't going to work because the vote already happened. Um, but you can see in my notes on this bill, it's HR 550. You can see what I wrote because section 2824 immunization information system data modernization and expansion a expanding CDC and public health department capabilities that that right there tells you what you need to know and then if you go to the last page page 13 authorization of appropriations to carry out this I'm reading the bill for you guys to carry out this section there is authorized to be appropriated 400 million to remain available until expended. That is on page 14 of HR 550. Um, this was a bill that was voted on last Thursday, I believe. There's been some controversy, controversy about it. Um, I voted no, and I just explained why, because I don't believe that we should be expanding and empowering a federal government agency that the CDC that has become increasingly more politicized um, by the day. Um, but there were several Republicans that did vote for it. Again, I'm not here to tear them down. Everybody has reasons for why they vote for it. If your representative voted for it and you disagree, call them. Um, I just firmly believe that we don't need to be expanding any more federal government agencies, especially ones like the CDC. Also, every state already has a vaccine ba uh, uh, bank, like Florida, for example, we have a vaccine 
um, database. And I don't really need the feds to have their little grubbies on it. Um, so everybody has different reasons for why they vote for or against a piece of legislation. Um, but again, just call your representative and ask them why they voted if you're concerned about that particular issue. That's H.R. 550, the Immunization Infrastructure Modernization Act. Um, and like I said, I voted no. Vote happened last Thursday. Um, it now goes to the Senate. You can also track all of this on govtrack.us, I believe is the website, and it'll tell you exactly where each bill is um, in the queue and in the process. So, um, no, Rachel, I just saw your, your comment come across. Um, HR 550, and Elaine said, do we need to keep calling? Um, the things that are happening this week that are, um, are that you can do, you can call and um, encourage people to say, no, I don't want you to support the, I keep getting the cue of five minutes, Adeline, our comms director keeps walking by. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, um, they're telling me that I have to get ready to go. Um, you can call and tell them that you're very much opposed to the Build Back Broke agenda. Call senators, do not call members of Congress on it um, because it already passed the House. So your efforts can be much more effective by calling the Senate. Um, again, you can go to senate.gov, type in which state you're in, and it'll give you the contact information. Don't email, emails can be easily ignored. Call the office, the DC office, tell them um, your name, you can give them your zip code. Um, tell them that you say, no, I don't want you to support the Build Back Broke agenda. And then, this is important, tell them that you want a response. If you say you just want to give your opinion, they will not send you a response. Um, every single member, whether it is a senator or a member of Congress, a, a, a House representative, if you say that you want a response, it gets logged that then we respond to you. We have to respond to you. You guys have seen me. I call people personally. We send letters, thousands and thousands of letters out. So make sure you tell them that you want a response. Um, something else you could call about this week if you wanted to um, uh, uh, get involved is talking about the um, debt ceiling and voice your opinion on the debt ceiling. But I will tell you guys, I am never going to give you the code red alert, hey, all hands on deck, unless it is 1000% necessary. Um, so right now we know that the focus is going to be on debt ceiling. We know that the focus is going to be on NDAA. So um, there should not be any action on Build Back uh, Broke this week. But again, it never hurts to call. Keeping that pressure up, that does help ensure that that bill stays um out of the queue for action so i hope that helps and um i appreciate you guys i know there's a lot of questions i i can't get to i've got to go get dressed and head off to my next meeting but um i will do multiple videos throughout the week i'm really excited um matt my husband is coming to washington this week to spend time so you guys will get to see some of the behind the scenes stuff um with him and um Really, really excited. There's also a new report out that I'm going to do a video on this week, and it is this. It is the Chinese Communist Party's subnational interests in the United States. I think this is pretty damning, um, if you can see that. This is stuff that is happening that is not getting any coverage in the news, unfortunately. So um, I appreciate y'all. Have a good cup of coffee. I am going to finish mine and then head out. Um, stay tuned. Our team will be posting stuff all throughout the day and throughout the week. I'll be on Harris Faulkner today at 11. So make sure you tune in. And again, can't thank you guys enough. I have, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, again, say a prayer for all those, um, that we lost and their families on, um, Pearl Harbor. Today is Pearl Harbor day. And thank you guys so much. Really appreciate you. Um, it's going to be a very busy week in Washington. So pray for your country. And thank you guys for all that you do.